a show for Prince fans. Suki and Network. I said it before, but I'll say again. Look, James Brown was the king. This is probably the closest to biting, which they used in the 80s as terminology for taking someone's music and using it for your purpose. Not the closest I've ever seen Prince to biting. And uh, he also has a little bit of fun here. He has a hilarious sense of humor. Yeah, it's funny as hell. (laughs) Listen to him crack you up on this. This is Pretty Man from the 1999 album Raven to the Joy Fantastic on the show for Prince fans. I I smell myself. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Hey, now, what's up? Oh, you know how to come over here staring at a brother so hard. <laughs> Say you what? If you want to be my baby, got to tell me so. Oh, my confident lady, better act like you know. If you want to be my baby, come on, take my hand. Tell me that you want to get wet, pretty man. See me up here dancing, dancing on the floor. Got you thinking about doing it.
Maceo, Maceo, can you blow? And that, exactly, pretty man. Because, you know, Prince liked James Brown like, a lot of people like James Brown. Who didn't like James Brown? If you like funky music. And an interesting bit of trivia for a while there in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, Prince invited James Brown's former soloist, uh, saxophonist, Maceo Parker, to tour with him. And that was Maceo doing the sax solo. solo One of the best the, sax players ever in the history of sax, period. There at the end of a uh, uh, Pretty Man. So, again, Prince was uh, all about paying tribute to uh, the people who came before him. Uh, in this case, in music with James Brown, headlined with a cherry on top with a solo by none other than the legend, Maceo Parker. Maceo, can you blow? Maceo, can you blow? Of course so. All right. <laughs> um, so, 3121. I, you, and if you remember, and I know you do, Lee. That was one of my favorites. Know, all right. You remember, this album. is when uh, Vegas hooked him up with a contract. And he had a club in Vegas during this time. And he showed up, or he didn't. It did very, very well because everybody was like, okay, Prince might play tonight. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to keep you in that James Brown kind of groove, y'all. So this is Get On The Boat. So whereas Pretty Man was, you know, all about fun, he's funking y'all with a message on this one. Check this out. Get on the boat, y'all. There's room for a hundred more. Just out your window. Tell me now what you see. Coming up the mountain for new philosophy. Uh, every single color, every race and every creed. Uh, looking for the truth, y'all. It's gonna set somebody free. Get on the boat. Uh, get on the boat, people. Get on the boat now. We got room for a hundred more. Get on the boat. Get on the boat, people. Get on the boat now. We got a room for a hundred more All across the nation People doing what they can To avoid the tribulation That will be great throughout the land Everything, Everything in darkness Must come out into the light When we love each other It's the only way it's gonna be right Get on the boat Get on the boat, people Get on the boat now We got a room for a hundred more
Welcome back, Prince fans. As always, we bring you the funkiest of the funky. All right, here we go. Get on the boat. We got room for a hundred more. Get in the boat, people. Can I preach from the book of Prince real quick? Preach, sir. Preach. The man said, what is the harm in listening to the hopeful words we say? If it moves your heart, then you better get in without delay. Get on the boat. Get on the boat, people. It's a very hopeful song. That's what I'm saying. It, it, every time, you know, sometimes you just think that you just bump into a James Brown beat and having a fun with, you know, and then all the while, if you listen to the music, the man is talking about world peace and folks getting along. It's, it's a really, really beautiful thing about his music. No doubt. And people evolve. And we all know that as an artist, we followed this cat from the early 80s, late 70s, up into um, up into 2016 at that point. We love him. We miss him. The music is awesome. Get on the boat. We got more room for 100 more. And we're going to take a break. We'll be back to put a bow on it right after this on the show for Prince fans. Keeping it real, right, and funky. Mauricio Calvo, who happens to be the executive director of Latino Memphis. Welcome to Funky Politics, sir. How are you? Great. This is, thank you. You're having as much trouble having, saying my name as I do say Kuduxian, so we're, we're even. <laughs> hey, look, I'm good on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reasonable people understand that a country is more than its leader. I mean, I love the, my home country, but yeah. but uh, I, I, I tell you, I think people in Memphis need to count their blessings. Funky Politics on the Kazukian Network. So, for a portion of the 2000s, Prince kind of experimented with different ways to get his music out. Uh, one album he released by giving it away in a New York, kind of New York, but a London uh, newspaper. Uh, one deal he worked out exclusively with Target, which is also based in Minneapolis, which of course is his hometown. Now, the album that you could only get at Target, it was a double album, actually a triple, uh, included a CD called Lotus Flower. And from Lotus Flower, in 2009, this is Colonized Mind. I want to talk about it. on the shore and say it's always been there download no responsibility do what you want nobody cares upload the master race idea genetically disposed to rule the world the world Download, a future full of isolated, full of isolated boys and girls. Upload a two-party system, the lesser of two dangers, illusion of choice. And bashes and bashes. Nothing really ever changed. Really ever changed. You never had a voice.
All right, and that was Colonized Mind. Originally put out um, on the Lotus Flower album. Um, I was a very, very big fan of this album. Um, Not album, I'm sorry. Song. A lot of songs I liked on the album, but this song in particular was... yeah, it it's really up, yeah, yeah. It's really it's really thoughtful. It's really introspective. You know, you can tell you got the bluesy kind of guitar thing going on, and and again, the subject matter of what he's talking about. He's talking about all of the things like that we see in our society happening now. You know, and we don't speak up about, and not just the things that are happening, but but what the seeds are that give that create these kind of results. You know, yeah, that creates what blows a child with no father. You know, mm. what shows is a child with a hard time showing love. If you look, you show them on a sign. Throughout mankind's history, history, a colonized mind. The one in power makes law under which the colonized fall without God. It's just it's a blind, blind leading, leading the blind. blind. Preach, brother. I didn't write it. I'm just saying. Hey, man, I'm, I'm just following. I might, you know, if it don't make sense, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even give it credence, but. It makes perfect sense. So, you know, it was just, like I said, it's a, it's a beautiful song. It's a really thoughtful song. And, um, and I think it's really, really cool. Oh, but, and if you like some serious guitar playing, like you never heard before, notes and stuff, uh, there check, you go. Check it out. What else we got on tap? Uh, on top of that, after Colonized Mind, we're going into Tomorrow which is going to be a lot more funky. A colonized mind is a lot more serious. But we're going to go back into uh, making you, uh, you know, you over 45-year-olds twerk. That I never look you in the eye I'm just afraid of that I might die my love for you I wanna kiss you but baby I dare not try Oh my dreams most surely will come true So that's why please don't hold my hand Cause I will let you understand And kill the other boys in the band I want you to mango
a show for Prince fans on the Kazookian Network. Ready or not, here I come.
So right around, what, 1990, it was the biggest music news in the industry at the time. Prince signs a $100 million deal to do 10 albums for Warner Brothers. It was like, oh, snap, we finna get all the Prince music now, right? Right. The problem was Warner Brothers was like, okay, we want you to slow down on putting the music out. Yeah, he couldn't release it. Right, it's like, you know, because Michael Jackson and everybody else, you know, they were waiting three, four years between the albums, right, to let people miss you for a while. People was like, give us some time to let people miss you. Prince was like, no, the music has to come out. And that was when he started writing Slave on his face. And that was when he started giving music to Warner Brothers that he really, I don't, I wouldn't say he didn't care about it, but he was, he certainly wasn't trying to give them a commercial product, something that would sell in the record stores. So we're talking about the vault and uh, I mean, in 1995, what he actually did was, and I know you remember this, Lee, uh, Lee I apologize. Um, the album cover, album cover said Prince, yeah. 1995. Well, like, yeah, 1958 like, 1950, to 1993. Yeah, 1993. Like he was dead. No, it was nine, I thought it was 95. Okay, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. But yeah, he did it like he was dead and because he had lost the rights to his name. And Warner Brothers was like, yeah, anything you put out, you know, we're, we're, we have the rights to. So that's when he started putting out music under MPG, Music Club. That's right. And he started giving some of the music to Warner Brothers. And that's when we started seeing the hits and the B-sides, which is a 3D C- three CD set. And of course, we had the album we just told you about, which was Come. And the song, the hit song on that, or the closest thing to a hit, was called Let It Go. So we're getting close to the end of the show, y'all. But before we get out of there, we want to give you this classic from the 1992 album, the symbol album. This is Love to the Nines. To the nines, I want to be loved too. But I really 
make that booty boom. I say how you gonna make that booty boom? How I'm gonna make that booty boom? Step back, give a girl some room. Oh, let's go. Let me see the booty boom. Let's go. Let me see the booty boom. Actually, they do know. They just got introduced. So, listen, we love you guys participating in this. This is a show for Prince fans. We are a love symbol album, 1992. And we just gave you just some snippets. We got a lot more coming. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. Lee, tell me what you're going to do, bro. Man, we're going to take it on home. We have enjoyed this time for you. We enjoy giving you this special time to... For you Prince fans out there who always had to tone it down for people, this is for you. This show is for you. And you know why? Because my name is Lee Eric Smith, and I am a Prince fan. My name is Shannon White, and I was born a Prince fan. And you are not alone. And we will see you back next time here on a show for Prince fans. Powered by Kazuki. Be good. May you live to see the dawn. A show for Prince fans was recorded at Kazuki Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kazuki.